Director Fatanjo. Of course, my boss, uh, Uncle Emil, and my colleagues, Esa, and the others who are here. I want to quickly ask a question. Mr. Piyabe, as I flank my eyes around this gathering, I begin to wonder whether this is the teacher, the teaching staff lot that you have in this cluster. If the question is no, then where are the rest? Why am I saying this? I've sat down here and listened to the questions that have been asked, and one of them suggests that there is a segregation or a differentiation between government and mission. It is only when we come together as a people, as a force, that we could do a lot. It is not going to help if we are so divided as what I'm seeing. It's not going to help anywhere. But I'll go straight to the issue of the scholarship. Government does not differentiate whether you come from government schools or mission schools. There is one definition that is being referred to as public school. And public school by the definition is any school that government's money is spent on. And like the GTU rep said, every one of us is paid from the central government. Whether you are teaching at Eustra, which is a faith-based school, like presentation is a faith-based school. Every one of us is paid from that. What we need to do is we often don't organize ourselves in times of scholarship. Imagine as we talk for your interest, we have over 6,000 people wanting to go to university for first degree or second degree. The question I will ask you is, if you were the manager, how would you manage that situation? Leaving 6,000 of the teaching fraternity staff to go to the college university, who is going to be in the classroom for which is the core mandate for our existence? So what I'm trying to say is everything must be coordinated. Unless we have a coordinated approach, it will be difficult to address the scholarship issues. So, but we don't segregate anybody. As long as you have the requirements and you have the admission, we meet you or give you scholarship based on that. And the other thing I want to stress is, if I am a teacher and I ask to go and I ask for scholarship to study aeronautic science, for example. That is certain that I'm not thinking of coming back to the field, but rather I'm thinking of going to work on aeroplanes. Would I prioritize that over if somebody teaching mathematics in the classroom? The answer is no. Whether it is uh, received well or not, I will not give scholarship to somebody who is already or has demonstrated the interest and ability to leave the teaching field to another area and deny someone who has stayed. So those are some of the considerations that we often put on the table to be able to choose among the lots of the 6,000 who will be given scholarship. But everyone is encouraged to apply. As long as you get the means, the qualification, the admission, we will look at the merits of your program and we will certainly give you. Again, there is gender. Some of you may who may know uh, you are a, there is a school called Bolibana. I don't know how many of you know the school. That school, since it existed, it has never got to a science teacher, it's either general science or what. But three, four years ago, we were able to get a lady who did physics, chemistry, science, and we posted her to that place. You think I will drop that teacher when she wants to go to university and give the scholarship to you Let's be honest. Somebody who has sacrificed that enough. So there are a lot of dynamics that are involved. But be assured that every one of us is entitled to scholarship and it shall be given to you as and when it is fulfilled by what we are looking for. Uh, the issue of postings. I want to tell uh, Mr. Pidabi, my boss, that you can leverage on the expertise of this man sitting next to me. I can assure you, he can help you in a lot of things. I've had my colleagues spoke about workshops. 
he does a lot of work even for the ministry, even though he's a ministry staff. Those are his skills, and you can make use of them. I am glad that Mr. Bidabi spoke about having a general exams across the country. That has been the plan of MOPSI. We would have really had that gone. Unfortunately, it uh, came and coincided with my exit, and it could not proceed. But I must commend you on that foresight. It's important that you hold standard exams across the country. In that way, you fight a lot of things. But the most important thing that you achieve is quality and also in times of IQ. You will know that these are the outstanding students and you'll be able to prepare them for the life after. So I want to comment you on that and encourage you that you walk beyond the primary level or the lower basic level and escalate it to the upper basic and senior secondary school. That is the thinking of the ministry and we really want to work on that. Structures, I know I have always had that challenge. Uh, a lot of people came to me. Uh, MRC Holland does not, like uh, Mr. Piavi has put it, leave mission or any. He spoke about the schools and in the classrooms in St. Uh, we have some in Amit uh, Neustra. But what we're doing is we are looking at regional differences. If you look at our natural enrollment across the country, you look at also our comparative advantages across the country in terms of regions, there are some regions that are disadvantaged than other regions. So what the education policy is calling for is equity. And equity means that we need to balance the scale such that the people around the greater Bajul do not have everything while the people on the other side are very disadvantaged or limited in terms of what they get. So that's the more reason why we are trying to focus or concentrate on up country so that we could bring them up to the, uh, trying to achieve equity across the world. That's the more reason that any student that goes to Basse College, we give you scholarship outright. You, as long as you get admission in Basse College, we give you, what we are trying to do is to encourage you to be able to be stationed in your area and in that way you'll be able to meaningfully contribute to the welfare of the school because those children you'll be teaching would be basically your younger brothers, some of them may be your own children and we think in doing that you will definitely commit to that more as if you were to teach somewhere outside your place of reading. Those are the few things that I, Mr. Piyabi, I thought I would clarify. And maybe at a later point, if there is, there are a few things that I would really want to share with you. Uh, on the issues of HR, I have my colleagues sitting behind me here. I will be talking to you on issues of management, because it's becoming a concern now. We don't want to go into fighting. Let's talk first. So that if we have an understanding amongst ourselves, we'll be able to solve and help each other in our daily pro uh, programs as we, as we go. So on that note, thank you very much for now. Until later.